Okay, this is video six for chapter five. So it's all about slope, but slope is just another way of, say, of saying the rate. So really, we're finding rate, and it goes with section 5.5 .5 in your book. So our target is, can we find the rate in any different kind of problem? Can we find the rate from a story problem, from tables, from graphs, from equations, right? Any kind of way they give us that different relationship, can we figure out what the rate is, okay? So like I already said, some vocab, the rate is just the same thing as slope. And we've already done a lot of, talked about uh, rate a lot in chapter five already. But another name for it that you'll see in this section is the constant, constant of proportionality. Constant of proportionality. So just a longer way of really saying the rate, okay? So let's start with finding the rate or the slope from a graph. So on a graph, the rate is shown by the steepness of the line, right? So think about a graph of a line. It could be a steep graph or it could be a not as steep graph. And we'll look at some different examples here. So there's a formula that we use to find it when we're looking at a graph, and that is the change in y, change in the y axis or the y variable, divided by, so this is actually a fraction bar here, divided by the change in the x, okay? So this gives us a fraction. Our slope often, when we're looking at a graph, is very often written as a fraction. But I'm gonna simplify it a little bit. We can uh, sometimes abbreviate change with this little delta, change in y, that triangle means how much did the y change, change in y, over change in x. So this simplified fraction would be the slope of a graph. Okay, so we're just going to look at some different examples, right? Slope could be positive. We can have positive slope, which means as I'm reading my graph from left to right, I always read it left to right like I do a sentence or words on a page. As I'm reading that way, my values are getting bigger, right? So this is a positive slope because it's like an uphill from left to right. So I can have a large positive slope. I could also have a smaller positive slope that's not as steep. So both of these are positive, they're going up from left to right, but this one is bigger, this one is a little bit smaller. Still both positive, okay? I could have negative slopes. That means as I read my graph from left to right, uh, my values are decreasing. Right, so that's a negative slope. As I go across the page, it's a downhill slope. So that's a pretty big negative, or I could have something that's maybe not as steep, more gradual. Okay, so more steep is a bigger negative slope, and less steep, a flatter downhill, right? Like this would be the bunny hill at the ski resort. Not as steep, smaller negative slope. Okay. And then we can also, we won't do too much with this, but I also want to point out, you could have a horizontal line. Just to remind us what those words mean. <clears throat> or you could have a vertical line and those have special slopes too that we'll talk about more in eighth grade. Okay. All right, so let's look at how we actually calculate slope from a graph. Well, we said the formula, and I'm gonna point here to my little shortcut way of writing it, change in y over change in x. So when I look at my graph, I'm gonna use the points that they gave me. I'm gonna make them a little bit darker so you can see them. And I'm gonna look at how much did the y value change right here from this level, right? This is at zero of a y value to four of a y value. I'm really looking at the difference between these two numbers and I can see that it went up four. So I'm gonna write my formula, change in y over change in x, and the change in y was four. 
And the change in x, how much did I go over this way from 0 to 1, right? This piece of my little triangle that I drew in is 1. Well, 4 over 1 just simplifies to 4. This graph has a slope of 4, okay? I'm going to color code this. This is how much the y changed. So this is the change in y, or how much it went up and down. Often we call this the rise. So I'm going to put it up here, the rise. And then if I finish color coding this from side to side, how much did I move this direction, is the run. That's the change in x. And often we call that the run. So you'll hear people refer to the formula for slope as rise over run. They're really just doing this change in y over change in x, and then you get a simplified fraction there. Okay? So let's look at the next one. I'm going to go back and find my change in y. I'm going to keep my colors the same. So from here to here, it went up 1, 2, 3. So my change in y is 3. My change in x, well, I went over from here to here. My change in x, it went over 2. And when I write change in y over change in x, I get that simplified fraction. That is my slope, 3 over 2. Okay, let's do one more. Um, this next one, change in y. So how much did I go up from here to here, from 2 to 3? Well, I can see I just went up 1. And then how much did I go over from 3 to 6? I went over 3. And when I write that as a fraction, up 1 over 3, I get the fraction 1 third. This has a slope of 1 third. Okay? So, let's write it again that the slope is always just change in y over change in x. And that's what I did on all these graphs to find the slope. Okay, to find the rate or the slope from a table, again, still change in y or that triangle, delta y, oops, sorry, change in y over change in the x, delta x. Change in y over change in x. All right, let's see what that means. Well, in a table, notice that this top uh, row is x, my x variable. This row is my y variable. So we're looking at um, an actual distance on a map in miles actual distance between the cities in miles compared to the distance that they are on a map. Okay, well, we have to find the change in y and the change in x. So let's see, we like to draw these little carrot things to say the change between those numbers. Looks like all of these x's are going up by 10, right? Up by 10, up by 10, and all of my y values are going up by 25, 25. 25. So that's nice. I noticed that all my change in x's and all my change in y's, they match. And now I just have to do change in y over change in x. So I get 25, taking this change in y, right? This is the, how much the y changed each time between these values compared to the change in x. How much did it change between these x values? So 25 over 10. And I, I can divide that and get 2.5. So really we should label this as well, right? We know that our slope or our rate is y over x, so this is 2.5 y miles over x millimeters. So 2.5 miles on the map for every, or 2.5 miles between the cities for every millimeter on the map. Okay, let's flip it over and look at the back. So I'm going to do one more, and then you'll pause and you'll do one. But this next one is words per minute. So remember, we're going to do y over x. So how many, uh, what's the change in the y over the change in the x each time? So if you subtract these, which I did, I got 90. So 90 more words, 90 more words, 90. And the change in x we can tell is plus 2 plus 2, plus 2. So when I do change in y over change in x, 
it would be 90 divided by 2, which simplifies to 45. And I need to label it. The label on Y was words, and the label on X was minutes. So really, this is just like we've been doing throughout the chapter, finding the rate from a table, 45 words per minute. Okay, pause and you do number 11. Okay, when I did the subtraction here, just to find the difference, I got 162.5, and this was a change of five each time. So when I do change in Y over change in X, it would come out to 32.5, and then my label would be miles per gallon. Y is the on top, gallons, X is on the bottom. Okay, let's look at an equation. The rate or the slope from an equation is just the number multiplied by the x. So in each of these equations, I can find the rate. It's whatever number is multiplied by the x as long as, as long as it's written in this form, right? Y equals mx plus b form. Or you might remember from chapter 3, y equals a starting value plus or minus the rate with the x. That's how we learned it in chapter 3. So as long as it's written where y is by itself, okay, then you can just find the number with the x to be your rate so or slope. So this is a slope of 4, slope of 8, slope of 0.25, slope of 3, slope of negative 2.7. Now, don't include, don't say this, don't put the x as part of the slope, it's not. Just the number in front of the x is the slope, okay? Okay, rate from a story problem. So, in a story problem, the rate is how much it goes up or down, up or down each time. So, let's look at a couple examples. Um, just make sure you know all rates should have labels and all rates need to include the word per or sometimes we say for each. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. In this example, pizzas cost $14 each. Well, that is the rate, $14 per pizza. Okay, this one's pretty simple. And then I can just take that 14 and put it into my equation as the rate. So Y equals 14 with an X, okay? Um, $11 for each ticket. Again, pretty simple, $11 per ticket. Nothing I have to really do there. I know the rate is 11 and I can put it right into my equation, Y equals 11X. But what if there are 27 pieces of candy for nine people? That I need to turn this into a unit rate like we did at the beginning of chapter five. So I need to think about which way makes sense. Well, I want to know how much candy per person. So I'm going to do 27 divided by 9, and that comes out to 3. So 3 pieces per person, right, with a label. I could say it this way, 3 pieces of candy per person, and then my equation. Okay? So there are a couple more here. I want you to try those, so pause now, and then just check that you have the correct rate and equation for each one. Look, there's five more here for you to try right now, so pause and do those. Okay, take a second to check these ones here. Pause right now if you need a little bit more time. Check those, and then I wanna come down and just look at this graph because they might also ask you to interpret the slope. That just means tell, explain what it means, right? So if I'm looking at this example, I could find the change in Y, right? Seven and a half up to 15, this change in Y right here, over change in X. And I would do that and get 7.5 over, and my change in X is 100. And I just put that in my calculator, but to interpret really just means to label it. So that's how many dollars per mile when you go on the turnpike.